Hello everybody, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy. Today in this video, I'm going to explain the deep value behind silver and uh, why it's been used uh, through the times, through, uh, you know, through centuries, through uh, currencies being destroyed and all these different economic cycles. Uh, you know, it's tested its time and it's still around. So, I'm going to get into it. I got videos with uh, Warren Buffett uh, talking about how he enjoyed the value of silver. I'm also going to share a video with uneducated economists, a little little snippet. Uh, I'll leave the links in the description so you guys can check them out. And I'm also going to go through this um, short and just kind of give my opinion on this JP Morgan, Chase, and Citibank have $2.96 trillion exposure to credit default swaps so and i also got the silver and the gold chart so first off we're gonna do do these little videos uh if you're new to the channel or uh, i hit that like boom 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 like i appreciate it uh the more likes um uh, makes me want to do better videos and then more people can see my videos and i can build the channel and uh you know it's, it's just good karma in my opinion and uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, tell me what's up. Uh, tell me how things are going in where you're at. Uh, share the video with friends and family. I also want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell based on anything I talk about. Buy or sell after you did your own research, due diligence, and you like the investments you're pursuing. All right, so we're going to play this little video. It's very interesting. It's kind of the stuff that I've been talking about. <laughs> if you've been following my channel religiously, I, I have talked this, this important information. It's interesting because silver has been artificially influenced for a long time. You saw that movie about, uh, you know, it was William Jennings Bryan, who was editor of the Omaha World Herald and a congressman from, from Nebraska, and whose brother was governor of Nebraska. Uh, who was the big silver man, and they used to talk 16 to 1. Uh, the, the 16 to 1 ratio, I think, goes back to Isaac Newton when he was master of the mint. Charlie will know all about that because he's our Newtonian. Okay, now you heard it. He said 16 to 1, okay? That's how it used to be, 16 to 1, all right? So this precious metal silver, for every one ounce of silver, used to be worth the same as 16 to 1, um per gold so if you had 16 of these you could get one ounce of gold now we're talking about 115 ratio uh silver had a very good day today but you know people that are saying that oh well uh warren buffett he he doesn't care about silver or gold uh he likes businesses you know they're just kind of ignorant so i just need to share this information and uh inform people uh, that silver has been around and it's uh, it's lasted the test of time and it's uh, real money and uh, In this video with uneducated economists. He's going to talk about the coins uh, You know this this silver this gold coin was worth $20 this silver coin was worth $1. All right, so uh, and now if you had one of these gold coins um, I don't know if it was an ounce or not, but one ounce of, it looks like an ounce, one ounce of gold is worth $1,712. So that is why gold is a valuable asset and it's it's tested the, through all different currencies around the world when the, the their currency is destroyed. Uh, with Venezuela, Zimbabwe, when the dollar became so weak, then it eventually, you know, you, you kept your wealth if you owned a little bit of silver and gold. So we're going to share this video. Uneducated economists, I, I recommend watching this guy. He's got some very uh, short little videos that are nice, and he's very down to earth. So I'll play this. Because it was a claim ticket for one of these. You couldn't make one of these without having one of these on the shelf. And this was just a more concentrated version. So this is $20 gold coin right here, right? So if you had one of these, you could get 20 of those. And with 20 of these, you could get 20 of those or however it worked, right? But then in uh, 1913, the Federal Reserve Bank got into existence. And they started printing out Federal Reserve notes. 
And if you look at this, it says, we'll pay to the bearer on demand $5. But nowhere on here does it say $5. So there you heard it. He says that with uh, the silver coin or the gold coin, uh, you can exchange it for dollars uh, with the bank. And um, it was backing the dollar, right? Now, nothing backs the dollar. Debt backs the dollar. You got debt on top of debt on top of debt on top of debt. So, you know, realistically, if they were to uh, account for all the dollars in circulation, uh, the gold price and the silver price should be a lot higher than what it is right now, let's just say. So, uh, okay, so let's do JP Morgan Chase. Okay, so JP Morgan Chase, JPM ticker, Citibank, I believe, City ticker, CITI. Uh, big banks in USA, uh, these are the, the banks that, you know, they work the Fed now that uh, Trump, he's got the Fed in control over uh, the whole banking situation. Um, they control the Fed, which is really weird. It should be a, a single entity. It shouldn't be controlled by the nation, but um, under Trump and, you know, they, they've taken away the powers and... Um, They've got enormous amount of control, and now they're printing money um, ad nauseum uh, because they're printing paper over paper. So that's why some people that you think, oh, well, it's a business. Uh, I invest in businesses because Warren Buffett invests in businesses. Well, I'm sorry to say it, but you need to learn a little more information. So here, there we go. JP Morgan Chase has exposure to 1.2 trillion in credit default swaps, while Citibank has exposure to 1.76 trillion for a combined total as of September 30th, 2019. Okay, if you've been following my channel, I've been doing this information on my drives and I've been talking about the repo scam and how they're moving money around uh, because there's not a lot of liquidity. In circulation so I mean they're just doing this all this uh, fraudulent practices and they're getting away with it right in front of the people's faces and now they're doing insane quantitative easing uh, they said two trillion uh, when this when they try to get the economy back to normal uh, it's gonna be 10 20 30 trillion who knows so that's we're getting into a hyperinflation stage most likely uh, in order to, you know, continue the economy, but it, it enables the dollar to weaken. JP Morgan Chase had lost 39% of his common equity capital, while Citigroup had lost 51 So, yeah, I mean, it just goes into depth about this stuff, and I'm not really going to get into depth about it, but there's uh, what I heard from uh, Greg Manorino. He says that... So, when you look on the balance sheet of the big banks, they'll have the the banks, um, their balance sheet that they want everybody to see because it's a lot cleaner and it's not messy. But then they have another balance sheet that has uh, like so much debt on it. Um, that's, I think what that is, it would be all these like mortgage backed securities and all the stuff like that. And, um, you know, if people default on their mortgages, that's really, it's a ticking time bomb for these banks. So uh, that's why it'd be good if, if silver was backing things or gold was backing the currency so that they couldn't print at ad nauseum so that uh, you go to Vancouver, you go to these big cities and you're paying a million dollars for a little shoebox, 500,000, uh, 500 square feet condo. I mean, Give me a effing break. Uh, you think that's worth that? Um, go ahead. You pay the price. I'm not going to be the sucker. Uh, so you we're looking at this chart. Uh, gold futures. In French, they call a mortgage. Uh, like a debt certificate. A death certificate, I mean. So, um, yeah. Mortgages are can be, you know, kind of keep you in slavery. You know, you always have to pay all this stuff like that till death do his part but i mean you can get build your wealth with 
having uh, real estate and all that. I'm not saying real estate is a bad investment. I'm just saying though, it for the majority of the people enslaves them. So we're looking at this chart and it went down to about 1480 a few weeks ago, about a month ago or so, and now it's coming back up 1742 for a high today. So I can realistically see this go to two thousand dollars in the next month easily. Um, you know, this is in U.S. dollars. I don't know what the U.S. to the Canadian conversion is. I'm from Canada, so I mean, then you're talking about. I mean, last time I checked, it was about one point four uh, Canadian dollars to one dollar USD. So if it's two thousand dollars, you're almost talking about three thousand dollars for one gold coin. So an ounce. That, that is. I mean, you can get gold coins and in a quarter ounce uh, one tenth of an ounce uh, all types of things one gram so now we're looking at uh, silver and you know it's got this on the weekly it's got this top of the Bollinger Band so I mean as long as it kind of like expands on the Bollinger Band it'll give room for it to go higher and higher it's got to test that 16.75 uh, I do in the newsletter I'm getting a newsletter from Greg Manorino's channel uh, he was he was alerting people on SLV and GLD today. Uh, I didn't take advantage of that just because I I didn't really I, I wanted to buy the stock potentially, but he was talking about options and the options contracts that I was looking at weren't looking good. Um, I mean maybe I could have found some, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't putting in a lot of effort for that. So. Anyways, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Uh, Warren Buffett, you know, back in the day, he believed in silver and he ended up having to sell it. So Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett and uh, and silver, silver, JPM. Yeah, so Warren Buffett bought about 129 million ounces of silver at 3.5 cents, like $3.50 to $4 an ounce around 2002 to 2003. JP Morgan helped him with this purchase. He was forced to dis hoard at around $6 an ounce, and by 2007, silver was up to $17. Okay, uh, I'm good at math, and I'm sure all you guys are. But that's a pretty damn good return. That you're talking about a five times return, four times return on your money, and um, then you got people like financial education and other YouTubers that trash talk about silver and gold. Um, think, think, a, think a bit more intelligence, people. Um, they didn't want him to hold, have so, silver because. It's it's against their whole game, you know. He's connected with all these guys in the banks and all that stuff, like J.P. Morgan and all these big companies. So he has to play ball with them. So they forced him to sell, and uh, yeah, he had to sell that six dollars an ounce. If he would have kept it to two thousand seven, he would have made a lot more money. But even at that, for three years, uh, almost doubling the money, or like fifty, seventy percent. Uh, interest on that money is not bad at all and um, you know it was a secure purchase I mean silver is never going to be worth nothing um, and uh, his partner uh, he talked bad about silver but you know what uh, he was forced to sell I'm sure by the US government and JP Morgan and all these uh, companies were like putting a gun to his face pretty much saying like oh we're gonna short the crap out of your company or something i'm sure it was a lot of extortion that's just my opinion because why would he why would he uh why was he forced this hoard at around six dollars an ounce i mean psh, there's a lot of questions that aren't answered so uh i'm sure there's other people that have gone a lot deeper into it 
uh, but yeah, it's uh, the value of silver is there and they don't want to create the illusion that's worth a lot of money. That's why JP Morgan at ad nauseum, whenever it goes up a little bit, has to hammer it down, hammer it down. And uh, it's just a way to keep the dollar uh, feeling strength towards other nations. But it's a false reality. And when the US dollar becomes worthless, I mean, you want to own these this asset because it helps you out in a hyperinflation environment uh if you were in venezuela and you just had cash or you were in zimbabwe and other countries where the dollar just became so weak if you own silver and gold then you remain some of your wealth so anyways i hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't hit that like hit that like hit that like boom 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 like 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 smash it and uh, keep compounding info, listen to my lingo, and uh, shaka, cup peace, I'm outie for five.